Welcome to my maximum volume hypertrophy routine, where I will go over the training principles I've developed from over 15 years of experience in the gym. The actual routine we're doing is focused on my personal goals, just how you can use these principles to alter your training regimen to be more effective, whether you're a bodybuilder, powerlifter, or even athlete. There are 10 of these principles. One is intensity, the frequency, volume, rest time, and rep range. The training frequency and volume is substantially higher than average. It's why it's called maximum volume hypertrophy. You're doing every muscle group, full body, every single day, seven days per week, no rest days. To fit that volume realistically every day, the rest time between sets is 20 to 30 seconds as opposed to two to three minutes. That is typical to most bodybuilding routines, the average bro in the gym. Since you're working the muscles so much every day, you can't go super heavy as it will just stress your ligaments, joints, tendons, central nervous system. Therefore, the rep range is slightly higher to accommodate moderate weight, 10 to 15 reps. Number two, no downtime. We superset contrasting muscle groups to minimize the time spent in the gym, doing calf raises in between sets of back, maybe some glute bridges or squats, during your bench press rest time. No need to stand around for 30 seconds and do nothing. Yet most people spend more time on their phone in the gym than actually working out. Number three, muscle size versus volume. Making sure the volume corresponds to the size of the muscle. Obviously, your back is gonna need more work than your biceps. Same thing with legs, requiring more volume than triceps. You simply need more exercises, more sets to take that muscle to failure. Four, being failure. Definitely make sure you're going as close as possible to failure without risking injury, which is number five. Do not strain yourself. It's important to go near failure. However, you don't wanna risk injury by doing so. Doing a few less reps per session is insignificant compared to missing several months of working out from a busted shoulder. Number six, mind-muscle connection. When you perform an exercise, the most important factor is that you feel it in the muscle you're intending to work. With back, you don't want to be doing a bicep workout. Number seven, ideal repetition tempo. That means moving the weight in a manner that stimulates the muscle as effectively as possible. You know, for instance, on a chest fly, really squeezing the chest, stretching out on the negative, and then squeezing again. Bringing us to number eight, drop the ego. No point A to point B lifting, you know, moving the weight for the sake of moving it. Since our goal is to feel that muscle, have the proper mind-muscle connection and repetition tempo, the weight is not the end-all be-all factor. It's certainly relevant, just not necessarily better to go heavier. Just because you move 200 pounds from here to here does not equate to automatic results. Nine, be goal-oriented. As we mentioned earlier, these principles can be applied to any routine. So if you don't want muscular legs, don't work out your legs. If you want bigger arms, incorporate more volume for your biceps and triceps. Same thing goes for a lagging muscle group. If your chest is behind your shoulders, then lay off shoulders and increase the volume in your chest workout. Number 10 is consistency. This routine is extremely monotonous because you're practically doing the same thing every day especially if your equipment is limited. I find that it's much easier to become bored on a full body routine. So if you do miss one or two training sessions per month, taking a rest day here and there, the effective volume of this routine is still multiple times higher than any other routine. Now you can structure this routine in three different ways. One is finishing each muscle group on its own, which is what I've been doing, like chest, then back, then shoulders, and you superset it with non-invasive muscle groups, like doing some calf raises between bench press sets. Number two is alternating exercises, like doing a barbell bench press for three or four sets, then dumbbell rows for three or four sets, dumbbell flies for three sets, and lat pull down for three sets. Instead of just blasting your back first, you're doing a back exercise, a chest exercise, spreading the energy evenly between muscle groups. Which brings us to number three, if you're strapped for time, 
you can alternate sets and really superset and try to get through the workout. So you go straight from doing like a dumbbell press to a dumbbell fly, you know, maybe not even putting the weights down, which can overwork certain muscle groups like the shoulders. So it's definitely not the most effective way to do this, but you'll spend 40 minutes in the gym as opposed to over an hour. That's the introduction of my training routine for you guys. If you'd like to obtain the full routine, you can do so on frank stefanocom You'll receive a write-up of it as well as access to the video course where I explain all aspects in depth and take you through a real-time workout.